nice to appreciate the complexity within K-pop, rather than dismissing entire genres based on what people say. If you're new, or one of those who have been hesitant to get into this side of K-pop, I encourage you to do so. You might discover something beautiful under all the sirens and metal clanking. And if you end up not liking it, that is completely fine. Because at the end of the day, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Or something like that I don't know. Anyways that's all my time for today. Goodbye. In my last video, I talked about how noise music in K-pop is often misunderstood, and the same goes for slower, quieter songs like ballads and such. Fans tend to react negatively when their favorite groups release anything other than upbeat dance tracks, dismissing slower songs as boring and unlikely to succeed. And while I do acknowledge some may come across as dull, not all of them are terrible. And that's what bothers me the most. It's not all of them, yet for some people, it is. Some of these songs have a personality that some pop songs could never have, and it is truly a shame that many fans are quick to dismiss songs alike, because these songs have the potential to be truly beautiful and maybe even life-changing. I'm not here to prove anyone wrong or lie about how ballads are the pinnacle of music and just expect everyone to like them. I can't even lie about it because like many of you, I acknowledge that a significant amount of these songs can be rather average. For this video, I just simply want to express my appreciation for this style of music that I've always cherished. And while it's not certain, hopefully the love will spread to all of you as well. Enjoy the video. This stop is Kimpo International Airport. Kimpo International Airport. The doors are on the right. You can transfer to my number three. Just like for a lot of you, my introduction to the world of music began with the pop genre. They were widely popular, and for most part they were easy to listen to. I was young, and I didn't really want anything else from it. So as long as I enjoyed what I was listening to, I had no complaints. Then some time later came my exposure to Korean entertainment, with K-pop being my first discovery. It was pretty much still like regular pop music, only this time there was a lot more emphasis on the catchiness and appeal of the songs. And obviously it was in Korean, so... Anyways, of course, being a pop head, it was everything I could ask for, and eventually it became my main source of music. Something that came with the Korean wave was also my discovery of Korean dramas, which had a habit of overplaying their main theme songs. Despite this, whether it was forced on me or not, a lot of them have stuck with me, and that marked my first exposure to Korean ballads. Along with that was my huge interest in Korean music in general. I realized there was more to explore beyond the five K-pop groups I was already familiar with. For about a whole year or so, I began my search to expand my knowledge about music. And while I do appreciate many styles and genres out there, one really stood out to me, and these were Korean R&B. Although K-pop remained to be my primary interest, I knew that these slower-paced, chill songs resonated with me the most. Over time, my love for this style expanded to other genres and music in other languages, and now I have an undying love for this side of music. However, aside from its subdued vibe, there are numerous other factors that contribute to my deep affection for it. I may have been exposed to ballads first, but R&B was the one that really hooked me into this other side of music. Why do I love them? Well, it's quite simple. I just love the vibes. One of the main reasons we listen to music is for our own enjoyment, and R&B always had the ability to bring out the most out of my personality. As someone who is naturally introverted and quiet, people often assume I'm boring and lacking in fun, which of course isn't the case. I see myself as akin to R&B music, chill and enjoyable, with rhythms and lyrics that encourage you to groove along. While I may not be the most outgoing person, I am not a piece of cardboard as well, and in a way, I found myself relating to the genre. There's just something so captivating about R&B that just gets you either bopping your head or grooving your body. I always loved how easily these songs present themselves. Even when you're not out and are just listening through your headphones by yourself, you would still get relatively the same amount of enjoyment as being with others. 
As much as I want to continue talking about my enduring appreciation for R&B, I'd like to shift our focus to another aspect. K-pop R&B is already loved, and I don't have anything else to add to it. So, let's venture further down the spectrum and explore the quieter side of K-pop. Here's a genre in K-pop that often faces mistreatment within the industry. Ballads. K-pop groups releasing a ballad, for most K-pop stands, can be seen as a nightmare. Why? Well, it is only fair to acknowledge that this is a pop-centric industry, and most fans sign up for the upbeat and catchy songs that define it. So when they receive something else, while a bit unfair, it is understandable that their reactions can be disapproving. Plus, as a fan of ballads myself, I do recognize that a great number of them come across as dull, which unfortunately reinforces the idea that all ballads are boring. Unlike my previous video where I defended the case for noise music, I won't be doing the same for this one. Rather, I simply want to share my love for this genre. And maybe, just maybe, many of you would likely understand that not all of it is bad. Because these songs, while not all of them, can be truly beautiful. <laughs> While I'll continue to use the term ballads throughout this video, I want to clarify that I'm not solely referring to the ballad genre itself. I'm also encompassing genres like soul, jazz, R&B, and others that face criticism for their softened tone and slower-paced music. My deep affection for ballads likely stems from my overall preference for more subdued music. While I can appreciate various musical styles, I've always been drawn to the serenity and thoughtfulness that come with taking things at a slower pace. This interest of mine extends to other forms of art as well. For instance, I find beauty in simplicity when it comes to paintings, even those that might seem easy to create. Similarly, while I enjoy the excitement of a Hollywood blockbuster, I wouldn't mind sitting through a three-hour film that allows for deeper immersion. If you've analyzed any of my videos, you can see that I practice this as well. Ever since last year, almost none of my videos have gone under 15 minutes of runtime. This could hurt my views and click rate and all, but I still do it. There's just something about letting everything sink in and appreciating what is given to you. While listening, you could make up your own interpretations of the art, or perhaps immerse yourself in a world outside ours. I know it might sound a bit overly dramatic, but that is what I truly feel with some of these songs. One of my favorite releases ever in K-pop was V's debut album, Layover. As much as I loved exploring J-Hope's wonderful mind with his albums, or how much I streamed JK's songs of pop excellence, I just can't help but lean into layover more. Not only was the direction all artsy and expressive, but I felt more immersed in V's album just from the genres they chose for this album. In a way, I feel more connected with it than with other solo projects. My favorite track would definitely be Slow Dancing, and not to over-exaggerate, but I don't think any other song in K-pop has made me feel this way. That one minute jazz break or outro near the end of the song is what really sold me. No lyrics, no singing, and even with no videos, I could still feel what the song is trying to tell me. My body relaxes, I breathe slowly, and I let myself drown in this pool of graceful music while I enter a quiet state of mind. I think this album is a great example of how to make music effectively. Sure, I've heard better albums, but Layover was just perfect to me. Every song had its own role, and the whole thing was just a pleasant experience. I wish more solo projects were like this, personal and full of style. Instead of making something forgettable, aim for something that sticks with you, and only then will it be incredible. Tan
I mentioned that I'm an introverted person, which means I often spend time by myself. While I do have friends and family to talk to, I cherish my time alone. However, even for someone like me who enjoys solo activities like watching movies or learning new hobbies, there are moments when loneliness comes in. This feeling might be difficult for everyone to relate to, as not everyone is as introverted as I am. So, let me present a scenario that many of us, introverted or not, can likely relate to. Being alone at night. Late nights can be the most freest, yet loneliest part of the day. I don't consider myself as a sad person or anything, but if there are times that I do feel the lowest, it would be during the night. Some nights are worse than others, and it can be hard to get through. And one of the things that did help me through all these moments was listening to music, and especially ballad music. This song playing right now, Through the Night by IU, is one that I specifically remember listening to a lot during many of these lonely nights. Even though I may not have understood the lyrics, there was an undeniable emotional connection. I just felt it. In many ways, it felt like there was someone else beside me, singing me a lullaby, comforting me for whatever I've just gone through. Most of the time, it didn't feel like an artist singing. It just felt like someone was there talking to you at your most vulnerable state. This, to me, encapsulates one of the most compelling aspects of ballads. They feel real. Unlike pop music, which often prioritizes theatrics and danceability, ballads are just what music does best, and that is to touch your feelings. I think people underrate how genuinity helps a lot with liking a song. It is especially hard here in the K-pop industry, where the idols themselves don't compose their own music, which is probably the reason why it's hard to sell these kinds of songs to the audience. That being said, it still can feel genuine and honest. I truly grasped this concept when Wendy returned with her debut album following a year-long break. After her serious accident, there were doubts about whether she would ever return to singing. Fortunately, she recovered and made her comeback as an idol with the release of her debut album, Like Water. As expected, it was met with mixed reviews from fans, but whether it was a success or not, you could not take away the fact she was singing these songs from the heart. Especially with what she had to go through, you just felt her feelings resonating with you, as if she was telling a story. My favorite B-side from the album would most definitely be When This Rain Stops. The lyrics of the song reflect Wendy's own journey, offering a message of empathy and reassurance, encouraging listeners that it's okay to take a break when needed. What also helps is the fact that she is an incredible vocalist, and I don't just mean it from a technical standpoint. While I don't consider myself an expert on vocals or singing, one thing is clear to me. It's not about hitting the highest notes or performing the longest runs. When a singer inspires their performance with passion, it resonates with the audience on a deeper level. The genuine emotions expressed in singing can make people feel empathy, bring back memories, and stir strong emotions. In a way, it's like water. Just as water sustains life, music enriches our experiences, serving as a soundtrack to our lives. I can feel indifferent to what I'm saying, and that is a little disappointing. These songs have just been something special to me. Whether I was just sad or was impressed by the performances, I've always enjoyed listening to songs like these. Sometimes they can act as a time capsule. I can recall moments in my life just by listening to these songs, and it feels outworldly. This doesn't just limit to ballads, of course. Any just any genre out there, whether pop, rap, noise music, or whatever it is that you like, you are still able to have a deep connection with it. That is essentially the power of music. To connect. To feel. To appreciate just the things around you. 
I may continue to make fun of songs and all in the future, but no matter how objective, subjective, or maybe even how hateful I get when I criticize music, nothing will ever break the fact music is all about personal taste. No matter how universally hated a song is, there could still be someone who loves it a lot. And you know what? We can't beat that. Sure, it can be a little ridiculous to accept it, especially if you're on Twitter. But if you really think about it, who are we to care? It never was nice to see the public reception whenever an artist releases a slower song. Unfortunately, many listeners are quick to dismiss these songs without even giving them a chance. And as a result, these songs struggle to receive the same level of attention and appreciation as pop. While I hold a strong belief that the majority of these songs may not meet a high standard, it's still important to acknowledge the better ones. This applies across all genres of music, whether it's noise, pop, or ballads. Either way, they can all be great. Either way, I'm good. Even if you don't agree with all the points I've made, it's hard to deny the fact that many of these songs are truly remarkable. While they may not always achieve the same chart success or garner as much attention as pop music, these songs are as, if not, even better than pop. In fact, some of the biggest hits in K-pop have been ballads. Artists like IU, who focus heavily on jazz or ballad-centric music, have solidified their positions as a top act in Korean music. Though, there are some who don't think she's a K-pop idol, and therefore she doesn't count, we can take a look at a similar artist who is only second to IU when it comes to this style. Taeyeon is one of the biggest K-pop female soloists out there, yet she's not primarily associated with pop music. Even though she is surrounded by upbeat pop artists, she still is a part of the competition, and she's quite a big one. This whole thing doesn't just limit to soloists, by the way. Take for example, IVE, who are known to create amazing pop songs that would trend everywhere, yet, for their latest comeback, released a more vulnerable and thoughtful track. In this song, they express that amidst all the fame and success, they still go through their own struggles, but that doesn't discourage them at all, as either way, they know their worth, and they accept themselves. It may have not done crazy numbers, but the message was there, and it went through regardless. In many ways, ballads and slower songs face similar challenges of judgment and misunderstanding. However, as long as these songs stay true to themselves, share meaningful messages, deliver great performances, and create a precious experience, they'll always have a special spot in people's hearts. As much as I'd love to keep sharing my passion for this side of K-pop, I'll have to stop right here. My main goal was to express my feelings about songs like these, in the hope that you might eventually understand and appreciate them too. I'm not trying to be the savior of the genre or anything. I just wanted to have a conversation, as it's rare to hear appreciation for this side of music. I apologize if the video came across as boring or too personal for you, but I felt it was necessary. I didn't want to overload you with unnecessary information or knowledge that might not interest you. My aim was to give you a look into the perspective of someone who loves these songs, and hopefully, you've come to recognize that they can indeed be great and hold special meaning for many people like myself. Yet, if that wasn't the case, that's okay too. Despite not getting the recognition they deserve, I'm glad it still exists. These songs are truly special, in a way that it can enrich our lives into something more beautiful. And I know I'm not alone when I say this. Once again, my name is Winter Rossi, and that was The Quiet Side of K-Pop.